yourself Hammer, flathead screwdriver, socket wrench, three quarters inch socket, nine sixteenths socket, five eighths socket, eleven sixteenths open end wrench, five eighths open end wrench, nine sixteenths open end wrench, two jack stands, a jack, and an impact driver. Welcome to DIY Golf Cart. In today's installation tutorial, we'll be installing a lift kit on an 82 and up Club Car DS golf cart. Now the lift we'll be installing is lift 101, which fits 97 to 03 gas club car DSs and 84 to 2003 electric models. Before beginning any work on the golf cart, we need to make sure that our key is in the off position and our parking brake is set. We also need to choke the rear tires so the cart won't move. Our first step in the installation video will be to raise the front end of the golf cart to accommodate the larger tires. Once we've got the cart lifted, we'll need to secure it by putting some extra jack stands underneath the frame. Now I'll run it right across the cross member right here underneath the floor. We'll do that on both sides. Once we've got the cart suspended in the air, our next step will be to remove the front wheels off the cart. So we'll take just a flathead screwdriver and pop it right behind the wheel cover. Grab a three quarter inch socket and remove the lug nuts. This next step is very important. The lift we're installing, lift 101, is for 2003 and older golf carts or club cart DS's with aluminum dust covers. If your dust covers, once you get to this step, are black, then you're installing the wrong lift kit. All right, so our first step our next step is to grab a flathead screwdriver and knock these dust covers over. Just twist the screwdriver and it should just pop straight out just like that. Once we've got the dust cover removed, the next step will be to remove the pin. This one wasn't crimped over like most of them are. I'm just going to pull that pin out just like that. Grab a set of pliers and remove the nut. Once you have the nut removed, the spindle will just, or not the spindle, but the hub will just come straight off. Once we remove the hub from the stock spindle, next we're going to need to remove this pin that's on the back side of this nut. This is what's holding the tie rod assembly to both spindles on either side. So just pull that out like so. Grab a 9 16 Pull it out. Then we're gonna need this fork. To break it away from the spindle. Now that that one's broken away, our next step we need to grab a three quarters and remove the top of this part. Now I'm using power tools, but of course you can use handheld tools if you want. Once that's done, then we got a 9 16 bolt down here on the bottom side. Remove that one. Get everything out. It should all come out. Sometimes this bolt gets stuck in there, so you might have to hit it, hit it out with a screwdriver, especially when you're working on an older cart like the one we got here. Then we got the spindle removed. Once we remove the spindle, our next step we'll need to remove the kingpin. Now, if you've got an older cart like the one we're working on here, it's going to be very difficult to remove this. Because what happens is if you haven't been greasing it, 
the kingpin is just full of rust. So in this case, we're not going to use this kingpin. These aren't provided in the kit, but you can purchase them from our store. We're going to use these new kingpins on these new spindles. So now our next, next step will be to install the new front spindles, which I need a grease gun. So what we'll do is we'll grease these spindles, or grease these kingpins, on both sides. And then we'll run them through the new lift kit spindles. And I just have to tap that through. Yeah, and now once we have it down, it, it moves pretty freely. So since we've got it here, we're gonna might as well might as well put some grease through the grease cert here. Like so. Then our next step will require us just to put the new spindle on the cart. Actually, we got to put this washer that we took off. All right, once we've uh, reinstalled the other washer on the top here, put that on. Our next step is to put the washer and the nut on the top. Just hand tighten these for now. Run that through. Put the nut on. I like to see that. Then, if you notice, you just put that on all the way until you got a nice little gap through the hole of the bolt. And then you run your pin just right back through there. I need to like tap, tap it through. And then just tighten it down on the other side. So we'll just fold it over like that. Grab a hammer, put it down like so. Then we run our bolt through the bottom. Actually, it runs through this way. Get into the spring. Now I might have to hit this bolt through as well. Put the nut on the side. And all that leaves is just tighten everything down. And then we'll move right along to our next step. Next, it's time to put the hub back on the new spindles. So what we'll do, I mean you can either repack these by removing all the bearings, or you can just add some extra grease. And we'll install it on just like that. Put the nut over. Just like we did up here, we're just going to tighten it down until we are able to see where the pin goes through. So the pin goes through right there. We'll grab our pin. Place it through there. Kind of tap it down.
this one's kind of short, but what you want to do is you want to fold that over just so it doesn't poke its way out of there. We'll put some more grease. all up in there and put the dust cover over. With the dust cover you just want to lightly tap it. You don't want to dim it. The only difference is with the driver's side and the passenger side. The passenger side has the tie rod assembly goes to the back side and then also off the steering box here. So you're going to have to remove both these and there will be slots in the new, the new spindle that we're installing for these uh, tie rods. Once we've got the spindles on, either, on both sides of the golf cart, our next step will be to install this camber block. Now we're going to remove these four bolts right here with the 9 16 Once we've got everything removed, Next, we're going to remove these bolts, and you can just discard them. Once we've got the hardware removed, we'll take our camber block, rest it in between the spring and the frame, put a washer on, run the washer through, and through the camber block. Do this on two of them. And then we're going to need to compress this spring. So once we got the spring compressed, then we'll take our original plate and put the nut on. This hardware is included in the kit. You don't want to tighten this down, you just want to hand tighten it so that you can adjust the camber on the front end of your club car. Once we've got those two in, we'll just do the same to the back side. Once we got the camber block in place and everything is, you know, hand tightened, we're going to grab a jack so that we can start to put the front tires and wheels on. So we're going to need to jack this thing up to accommodate the larger tires. Alright, now that we got the part safely jacked up, we, our next step is just to install the tires. So we'll just throw these on there, grab our lug nuts, next we just lower it down. The last step on the front end of this golf cart is to adjust the camber. And you can see, you can adjust it like this. Once you have the tires straight in place, all you need to do is tighten those four bolts, you'll be done with the front end. Alright, before installing anything on the rear, we need to jack it up as high as we can get it, and then put jack stands underneath the frame of the golf cart. Alright, once we have the Jack stands temporarily suspending the golf cart. We notice that it's not high enough to accommodate the larger tires. So we've gone and gotten a wood block and put it underneath the jack. And we're going to jack it up another couple inches. And once we've got it there, then we can put the jack stands up at a higher height. Okay, once we've got the cart suspended, our next step would be to remove the hubcap and use a flathead screwdriver. Grab a three-quarter socket. And remove the stock tire. Once we remove the stock tire, our next step will require the removal of the U-bolts. So we're just grabbing a 9 16 Actually, it's not a 9 16 it's a 5 8 
So grab a 5 8. And remove the U bolt. Just like that. Once we got the U bolt removed, our next step will be to remove the bolt that's holding the shock into place. This is a 9 16 Now that we got the shock plate removed, we're going to reuse this shock plate. Next step is just to drop the spring. Now what's going to happen when you drop the spring is the rear end is going to fall down. So what we're going to have to do now is go grab our jack and just support the rear end with the jack. So we're just going to rest the jack there on the skid plate while we, while we remove the spring off the golf cart. Okay, once we've got the rear end secure so it doesn't just drop right on the ground, we're going to push our shock out of the way. We're going to grab a 9 16 and remove our springs. And upon inspection of these springs, you can notice they don't even have bushings in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to replace these bushings in these springs. It's just a very old cart, so might as well get all the parts on them while we got everything apart. So next, we'll take the front off. This last task we did took a lot of work. We didn't show you, but the bolt that's holding the leaf spring in place, the center, uh, what do you call it, spacer, the center spacer is actually corroded to the bolt. So in order to get it off, we had to cut it. And you know, all carts will be different. Some of them will be really rusted underneath here. Some will look like they just rolled off the showroom floor. We just happened to pick one that was just in terrible condition and we're just going to do our best to put it back right. Once we've got the spring completely removed, our next step will be to install the blocks. Now these blocks are going to rest right in between these axle tabs here. Um, and you might have to hammer them in with the, with the hammer. And you want the slope of it to be raised at the top and lower in the front. Because these are universal, you have to put the right ones on there. Once we got the mounting block on, next we're going to lower our jack, which I've already done. And we're going to loosen the U-bolt off the other side. Do not take the U-bolt off, but just loosen the two nuts on the bottom side of that U-bolt. Okay, now that we got the U-bolts loosened on the other side, this is what you call a leveling plate. This is basically going to act like your rear spring. You see the, this bolt that goes through here is what's basically going to run up, line up with the center hole on the bottom side of your axle and it's going to also hold your plate into place so we'll just place that right there and make sure it's in the hole put that over all right once we got everything hand tight into place our next step will be take our rear spring and we just want to put it through this front pivot so we'll grab a new bolt since we cut the old one off The 
best bet might be to use a screwdriver just so you can find the hole and then put the bolt through. Do a little tap. Put the nut on the back side. It's just a lot easier to do this at this step in the game rather than installing the spring to the new shock plate and everything like that because then you're just running to a huge mess. So now that we've got that on, our next step will be to install the shock plate and it looks like we're going to have to jack up this rear end a little bit in order to get to that step. This last task is probably the most difficult one, but we've got, we seem to get up, got everything lined up correctly. The bolts lined up to the block. The uh, centering plate is lined up with the existing factory shock plate and the new block of the rear end. So our next step, just put a washer and a nut on this last bolt. and then we should be able to tighten everything down. Now, of course, this side is going to be a little bit more difficult because the ride height of the other side is stock. But when you're putting the lift kit on the other side of the cart, it should be a lot easier because everything's going to line up with this side that we've already done. So once we're done with that, we'll put our, whoops, we're going to put our bushing in first. Put our bushing on, put our shock down, put our other bushing, washer, and then the nut. Okay, once we've got everything hand tightened here, our next step would be to put the bolt into the rear shackle. Now, you've got to line it up and then a, a nice feature is to grab like a screwdriver so that you can put it through this hole and kind of line up where the hole needs to go or where the bolt needs to go. And then you just need to run it through there. Maybe get a couple taps on the hammer. Okay, now that we got the the last bolt in the rear shackle through the spring. Our next step will just be to tighten everything up. We'll move right along to the other side. Now we'll just run the same steps to the other side of the cart. You always want to make sure you pick out the correct cart. Otherwise, you'll have to do steps like this. Once we have the lift blocks installed on both sides of the vehicle, our next step to accommodate the larger tires, because the cart's not raised high enough right now, we're going to need to jack the cart all the way back up. So we'll place the jack right underneath the rear axle there um, on the skid plate. We'll jack it directly up. Now that we got the cart at a nice height, next step just to add the new tires and wheels. Once we got the cart jacked up at a height to accept the new tires, we're going to install our 22 10 by 10 Rocks Blizzard tire on our steel 10 inch offset wheel. So we'll just put it on there. Once we got both the tires on, either, on both sides of the vehicle, next step is just to lower it and enjoy the new lift kit.